you have to know about HIV AIDS. First of all, HIV, the human immunodeficiency virus, that's a virus. Mm -hmm. And that virus destroys your immune system. Specifically, something called your T cells, your CD4 T cells. These CD4 T cells are really important because they're the shock collars of the immune system, meaning they dictate all they, di they dictate all immunological responses. Okay, these are the cells that the HIV virus is destroying. Okay, average uh, is about 800 to 1200, or some books say 600 to 1200. But my point is, that's the normal CD4 count, right? HIV little by little destroys that count, and once that count goes below 500, you start manifesting some symptoms of immun immunological compromise. And then once it lowers below 200, plus an opportunistic infection, mm -hmm. meaning a secondary infection, usually pneumonia caused by fungus, okay, pneumocystitis, stuff like that. That's when you have acquired mm -hmm. immunodeficiency syndrome. So HIV and AIDS are two separate things. HIV is a virus that destroys your immune system little by little, which eventually will lead to AIDS, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. Y'all with me on that? All right. So this right here, one, five, and 10, it's used to describe right now the viral load. How much of the virus do you have in your bloodstream? And this right here is just time. Okay, let's say three months, six months, a year, 10 years, 15, 20. You guys get the gist, right? So let's say that you expose yourself to HIV on this day. If I go to the blood, uh, to the doctor, and I get a blood test, which is known as an ELISA test. This checks for the antibodies, for the presence of HIV antibodies. So if I get exposed today, and I go do the ELISA test, will it come back positive? It will not, because the viral load no. has to get to a threshold. Viral load has to be high enough mm -hmm. in order for my immune system to recognize it and create the antibodies. That's known as zero conversion. This zero conversion means that your body has now produced the antibodies. But that doesn't happen until about three to six months after the exposure to HIV. Does that make sense, guys? Mm -hmm. So the viral load goes up, you zero convert, now you have the antibodies. Now, when you do your ELISA test, which should be done three times, and come back positive three times, now we know that you might be ready for the next step, which is a Western blot test. They do the ELISA test three times, Western blot, if it comes back positive, all those, now you have HIV. And that's what the whole viral load goes up, seroconversion, does that make sense? It usually happens between three to six months. About 98% of people serve convert within three to six months, right? Mm -hmm. But the virus does something very unique. Then the viral load drops. And so during that serial conversion, that's when you have like the flu-like symptoms, okay? Um, and that's when the patient, but you know, it only lasts for one or two weeks. People think they got the flu. So they don't really think it's something going on with HIV AIDS, right? Mm -hmm. So the viral load goes down, the patient gets better. And if we caught it, then we'll take the medications that will improve the immunological function. But if not, little by little, as the time goes by, the viral load continues to go up again. But this time, as it goes up, your immune system is going down, and it won't, the viral load won't go down again. At that point, it destroys your immune system, and that's where these numbers start dwindling until you get the 200 less with an opportunistic infection, and then you have AIDS. And that's, that can happen usually even after 10 years after your exposure. That's how uh, HIV becomes AIDS. Does that make sense for us? Okay. Um, because people with HIV, uh, AIDS, excuse me, their immune system is not working, you guys gotta remember that your innate immune system is uh, includes your mucous membranes. Mm -hmm. So people with AIDS, 
okay? They're immunocompromised, HIV stuff, right? They're not gonna have a lot of mucus being created, so they're, they're gonna have stomatitis, which is inflammation of the oral cavity. And so everything that they consume has to be low sodium, low citric acid, nothing too spicy, because it's gonna cause ulcerations of the oral cavity. Does that make sense, man? Mm -hmm. People with AIDS also suffer from uh, chronically from a diarrhea, because the mucous membranes in the GI tract is gone. And the acids in there, the bases, they start irritating it, so they develop increased peristalsis, they get diarrhea. Does that make sense, guys? Mm -hmm. People with AIDS are at risk of developing things like uh, cytomegalovirus, um, something called, um, God, what's it called? A Kaposi sarcoma, which is tumors all throughout the body. They can, it can be internal, it can be external. Um, toxoplasmosis. So these are all secondary infections that the patient with AIDS can develop. So we have to be careful of all of those. Does that make sense for us? Yes. Yeah.